Hi, everybody. I'm going to start this with reading some comments. Weather modification isn't just about making it rain. If these worthless a-holes can make it rain, then they can create drought, too, at will. Given that we know the U.S. military and its weather modification subcontractors are engaged in weather modification in an absolutely gigantic way, it doesn't take a do you mind if I curse? I don't mind cursing, but I know that a lot of people do mind cursing. Well, sometimes, you know what? Sometimes you just gotta. You just gotta. At least that's how I feel. And you know, I just read an article. People who curse are more honest. <laughs> Interesting, huh? But uh doesn't take a fucking genius to ask the most obvious question on earth. Why are these bastards allowing these apocalypses to occur? If one were to assume these fires and deluges were natural events, which they are not, why in the blue fuck would the military not intervene to mitigate, defray, diffuse, or otherwise terminate these droughts or these rains to minimize human suffering? Loss of life, loss of property, loss of agriculture, loss of forests, which we cannot afford to lose. A circle of flawed logic. If they have this incredible technology, why on earth would they not deploy it to help our country? The simple summary is this. These asswipes are clearly and inarguably not only causing these apocalyptic weather events, they are creating them at will anywhere on earth for a long list of psychopathic reasons. And anyone who doesn't believe it's happening is either hopelessly stupid, willfully ignorant, grossly narrow-minded, or a combination of all of the above. Thank you, C.B. Renard. I'm not the only one who's upset. They're putting lithium in the chemtrails. Yes, I know. Carol, my brother is there, near L.A., retired U.S. Air Force pilot. Won't listen. He is either unbelievably sound asleep, in deep denial, or knows, quote-unquote, he will be okay, quote-unquote, where he is. I do not get it. People are so stupid and cruel. No worse combination. That is exactly right. Stupid and cruel. Stupid and vicious. Put those two combinations together, and boy, people can really just hurt you in a bad way. Man-made disasters that the residents of Cali deserve. Everything they are getting to include death, mocking, and laughing about what they honestly believe are natural disasters or acts of God. People do not care about this or anything else. They live in a bubble. They will be screwed when it's their turn, and they have to find out no one cares about that either. I will not tell you to calm down, and neither should anyone else. I certainly cannot. Only people who have lived through the times we have or before us can truly appreciate that these types of occurrences we now see every day used to be rare or even once in a lifetime event. We're getting hammered with the rain here in Sacramento. My biggest fear is that they will unleash the Oroville Dam on all of us here in the Central Valley, which is one of the biggest bread baskets in the world. Cali is also the sixth largest economy on earth. And once they drown the Central Valley, they will pretty much finish off California once and for all. I'm so pissed that Jesuit Jerry and his evil Luciferian party of doom are doing this to us all. So fucking pissed. My husband and family continue to just roll their eyes when I talk about this. Maybe when our home is flooded, they'll finally wake up. Myself, two sons, have been chronically sick with what I call the chemtrail flu for months and months now. And again, 
eyes roll like I'm crazy when I mention that. And I'm scared my eight-year-old won't be able to use his nebulizer for asthma breathing treatments if our power is shut off. So I have to try to have plenty of inhalers on hand. Asthma was rare when I was growing up. It's not anymore. And you didn't you didn't have late onset asthma. Adults who did not have asthma when they were children. I knew of no adults that had late onset asthma until well, it was for me, I noticed that adults were being diagnosed with asthma in mid-2000. I want to read one more. That I thought I had highlighted. It's Lady Katie's stuff, and Lady Katie sure does have stuff that she's got to work out. I agree, but you're forgetting all the other past weather anomalies across the entire world. What makes California more special than the damn rest of us getting nailed by rare weather? P.S. Peace and love. <laughs> Whoa, okay. I'll send a box of tissues to the poor, poor state of California with a stamp. Didn't hear Texas crying, did you? Holy Christ. People are scary. I want to thank my subscriber for sending me this document. Agreement between Canada and the United States of America relating to the exchange of information on weather modification activities. The government of Canada and the government of the United States of America in this document admit that weather modification activities, projects, have been going on for a long time. Government of Canada, Government of the United States of America, aware. Because of their geographic proximity, that the effects of weather modification activities carried out by either party or its nationals may affect the territory of another. Noting the diversity of weather modification activities, diversity of weather modification activities, Meaning that weather modification doesn't just mean, mean cloud seeding. There are, well, a whole range of weather modification. Oh, yeah, every weather system can be modified, manipulated, intensified, or completely diminished with the technology that they now have. But listen to this, noting the diversity of weather modification activities in both Canada and the United States by private parties, oh, those uh, commercial weather modification companies, by state and provincial authorities, and by the federal governments. Provincial authorities, our state governments, our local governments, like Santa Barbara County, like the uh, water agency in Santa Barbara, that has been conducting weather modification since 1981. That was in the video that I just posted earlier today. But this is an agreement to, to notify one another when you're going to be doing a weather modification project and the exchange of information. Weather modification activities means activities performed with the intention of producing artificial changes in the composition, behavior, or dynamics of the atmosphere. Article 6. The parties recognize that extreme emergencies such as forest fires may require immediate commencement by one of them of weather modification activities. Really? This was back in 1975. The parties, Canada and the United States government, 
recognize that extreme emergencies like forest fires or wildfires may require immediate commencement of weather modification activities. What does that mean? It means that both govern governments have recognized that forest fires can be put out by their weather modification activities because they can create rain. I wanted to see who signed this. Who signed it? The representatives of the two governments, uh, Jean Sauvé, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that woman's name correctly, and Christian Herder. Okay, I looked into Jean Sauvé. Yes, the Sauvé series event explores collective action on climate change. She's the madam. She was the general governor. I saw this YouTube video. Jean Souve and boy, talk, uh, talk about pomp and circumstance. You can just put this woman's name in the YouTube search bar and you will see videos. Jean Souve. So this was the fall series How Can Communities Advance Climate Action in the Trump Era? Yes, this woman is actually an advocate of this climate change lie this is 2017, but back in 1975, here she is, the representative of the government of Canada, talking about weather modification. Christian A. Herder, this is his obituary. He died in 2007, and he was a lawyer and a longtime public servant. In 1967, he was the vice president of the Mobile Oil Corporation. 1967, vice president of Mobile Oil, which is now, what, Mobile Exxon? Or is it Exxon Mobile? 1970, he becomes deputy assistant secretary of state for environmental and population affairs. Think about our secretary of state today. Mobile, Exxon Mobil. Uh, Herder also taught environmental law. So you see this revolving uh, door, you know, the corporate government revolving door, has been going on for decades. Decades. The Fort McMurray fires. Look at these fires. I'll link below to everything. Uh, they look just like the California fires, right? Look at the grass, pristine. Look at all of these homes gone, destroyed. So I would say that the Fort McMurray fire in Alberta was that kind of an emergency that would bring about immediate commencement of weather modification activities, but it didn't occur. Look at this destruction. Look at all of the pristine grass, and look at the pristine roads, and look at all of the trees, and somehow these fires in Fort McMurray took out the homes just like Northern California and Southern California. And they were not put out weather modification activities. Neither government chose to put those fires out. Instead, they chose to let people's lives, businesses, homes get destroyed. I'll link below to this site, which has an awful lot of information on it. An awful lot of information the global warming and climate change debates. Who can we trust? 
No one. Global warming and climate change mainly focus to sell everyone on the idea that we need to support their use of geoengineering, but more importantly, is global warming and climate change manufactured by the powers that be to further their global governance agenda? Yes, absolutely. But I want to show you, they have a, a, an awful lot of documents on this site. But I was glad to find that somebody else was questioning how it could possibly be. Here, why aren't they using the Weather Modification Act? ACA cloud seeding. And Section 6 of the Canada and USA Weather Modification Treaty Accord to protect the forest by stopping the British Columbia forest fires. What's up with that? They're bringing about massive destruction. And, you know, somebody also linked below to this video, which was posted December 4, 24, 2016. Good afternoon, everyone. As all the focus is on the snows in the Sahara that haven't occurred in over 37 years, in Algeria, along the border with Morocco, snow is visible from space all the way across northern Africa. What they're not talking about is the people who have frozen to death because of this storm. These people were trapped for over 10 days in the snow without help. Staying in Algeria back to December 1st, snows. Middle of December, Algeria, snows. Taking a look at the mountains blanketed in snow from Morocco. And now that same system is heading right through Syria and Turkey, dropping feet of snow. Today, December 25th, Merry Christmas to everybody. Okay. So, you know, these weather modification activities going on all over the world. And that person who left that video comment, what's so special about California? Well, uh, because it's happening right now, and I've been on YouTube for over six years now, <laughs> I've posted so many videos on weather events, extreme weather events taking place all over the world. But yes, my concentration is the United States since I live here. But when you total up the numbers of people around the world who have been taken out, murdered by these weather modification activities, or their lives turning into a nightmare because of these weather modification activities, when you total up the numbers, you're looking at millions and millions just since late summer here, just here, Puerto Rico, Houston, Florida, California, you've got millions suffering the consequences. We also have uh, an awful lot of bats boiled alive in Australia. Thousands of flying foxes are boiled alive, freaking people out as they fall from the sky. The heat wave in Australia are boiling bats alive. Flying foxes, otherwise known as fruit bats, were seen falling from trees near Sydney, Australia. And here's a video on it. It's just one minute. Hundreds of flying foxes in the greater Sydney area were found dead amidst an extreme heat wave that struck Sydney on January 7th. Carers and volunteers said it was dreadful and heartbreaking to find the bat corpses on Sunday when temperatures reached a peak of 47.1 degrees Celsius, with many still hanging dead from trees and others scattered along the ground. Despite attempts to rehydrate and rescue them, at least 200 bats from a local colony in Campbelltown died in the heat. Animal Cares in Southwest Sydney said so many little lives were lost due to the extreme heat 
and not enough canopy cover to shade them or keep them cool. Adults sought out shade and more shelter further up the creek, resulting in many babies being left behind to deal with the heat. Any pups were on their last lot of rest before getting much needed help. Similar scenes occurred in February 2017 when over 700 gray-headed flying foxes were found dead in Singleton, New South Wales during a record-breaking heat wave. The flying fox is listed as an endangered species. Yes, that's how much they care about the endangered species. Yes, heat can be manufactured. So what, what did they say? It was 41 Celsius, I think. And what is that? If Fahrenheit, um, I don't know, 116, 17 degrees. <sighs> Do me a favor who, <laughs> you know, I was thinking, oh God. Um, the person who left this link and I clicked on it and I saw Paul Begley. Paul Begley and I got into it in 2011. He posting videos about me, I posting videos about him. Uh, 2011, we saw towns, entire towns being taken out by mile-wide tornadoes that were going on for like an hour, completely uncharacteristic of a natural tornado. These tornadoes were killing people, destroying people's lives, and this guy was on YouTube getting so many views because he's Christian. And he's talking about the Bible. And he's talking about prophecy. But he never mentions weather modification. He does not mention that man is using weather as a weapon. And we're at war. Never did I hear this guy mention it once. And I thought, I, I was so shocked then. I don't watch Paul Begley. And as far as I'm concerned... This guy is just like every other evil minister who is on the wrong side. So I'm sorry if you're a Paul Begley fan. I don't know. Has he mentioned anything about weather modification in the recent years? No. It's all prophesized. He has what? 209,000 subscribers. And yeah, when you have that many subscribers and you never mention we're at war, you never mention that these weather events are manufactured by man that people are being murdered, murdered, not by God, but by man. You get a half a lot of people just sitting back doing nothing. It's a disgrace as far as I'm concerned. So Sydney has been having severe storms and lightning storms and uh, heat waves severe thunderstorms with wind gusts up to 122 kilometers, leaving thousands of homes without power. Dark storm clouds were rolling over the city with heavy rain in a short period of time, causing flash flooding and tree collapses. Uh, look at these clouds. Sydney weather. Power restored after thousands disconnected in storms. Uh, new South Wales. So, does that look natural to you? I don't know. Australia, you're down under. I've never been there. Do you have bizarre storm clouds? Because it sure doesn't look natural to me. And you had a very bizarre lightning storm lightning hitting homes, causing some power outages, caused a fire in a home of a elderly woman. And you're also 
about to be hit with a cyclone in West Australia's north within days. I gotta do some research to find out what your mega regions are in Australia. Wondering if they're going to be destroying some homes so that people are moving, I don't know, into Sydney, Perth, your major cities. So you have a cyclone blue alert issued on Monday. Well, it's now Tuesday and it's Wednesday in Australia. Hundreds of oil and gas workers have been evacuated from offshore rigs in preparation for dangerous weather and gales of wind up to 100 kilometers an hour. And you're still mapping up from Cyclone Hilda. Um, here's a, a video on the cyclone and well now because you're you're a day ahead of us I don't know how many hours you are ahead of us but you're ahead of us so oh wait this was March 28 2017 okay I'm sorry I thought that this was the cyclone because I put in the search bar and I clicked on this week and this came up so I didn't even look at the dates so forget that but let me just go through uh, a few weather modification patterns. Control of tropical cyclone formation. Yes, they can control the formation of a cyclone and they can stop this cyclone from hitting you guys in Australia. Or they can intensify it to bring about an awful lot of destruction. What is this? Modify atmospheric electric conditions by artificial means. What is this? Weather control by artificial means. This is weather control by artificial means. The present invention relates to weather control and more particularly to a method and means for changing the natural electric charge, distribution, or pattern of thunderstorms and thereby controlling the discharge of lightning. Oh, wow. You mean that lightning storm that you guys just had down under? It could have been artificial? Absolutely. Apparatus for collecting atmospheric electricity, producing and stimulating rainfall, atmospheric space charge modification, system and method for stimulating rainfall, method for protecting a territory against cyclones. Cosmic particle ignition of artificially ionized plasma patterns in the atmosphere method and apparatus for creating artificially ionized regions in the atmosphere utilizing ionization trails of cosmic rays and micro meteors to ignite plasma patterns in electric field patterns formed by ground-based or, or otherwise electromagnetic wave radiators that don't only have to be ground-based. The applications for this method, for this invention, telecommunications, weather control, lightning protection, and event defense applications. And if you go all the way down to the end, let's do it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, here we are. Conclusion. Manipulation of the steering winds that control the development of mesocyclones. I don't, am I pronouncing that right? I'm losing my mind, I'm, my cognitive abilities, and I, I'm, I look at words now and I try to pronounce them and I'm thinking, hmm, you used to be able to do that. Well, but modification of the directions of the jet stream so they can steer winds, they can modify the jet stream, the direction of the jet stream that influence development of hurricanes or cyclones. And a method for influencing the electrical charge distribution in weather, weather patterns, such as cyclones. Defense applications include a method of accelerating electrons uh, to MEV energies in conjunction with the HARP antenna. Oh my God, you said HARP. You're a conspiracy theorist, because HARP doesn't exist. Oh, really? Well, this is Bernard. Insulin 
patent, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, HARP does exist, but just want to bring your attention to this weather modification by Royal Rainmaking Technology. Why is it called Royal Rainmaking Technology? Because it is from His Majesty, the inventor. Well, he probably didn't invent it, but he is the His Majesty oh in some I think actually a small island but because he is the majesty he gets to put all these inventions in his name and I'm going based on I saw this royal rain making technology and I did research on it years ago so that's all I can remember but what is this technology? Well, weather modification by means of chemical seeding comprises steps of triggering to activate cloud formation, fattening to promote cloud growth, moving to move cloud to a designated area, and attacking to initiate rainfall from cloud. What can that do? Well, it can enhance the amount of rainfall and prolong raining duration including increasing area coverage. Wow. So, they can actually enhance rainfall and they can prolong rain duration in areas. Um, we've got a problem, Houston. Houston, we've got a problem. I can't even remember those quotes, so I should just shut up. All right. This is Australia. It's just in telecast. So uh, here are frequencies. Um, yeah, I would consider this Northwest Australia or North Australia. West. Here you got your frequencies. Right off the coast. But maybe it's in telecast. I don't see where this cyclone is. That's all right. We couldn't even locate the biggest hurricane ever, Irma, on radar when Irma was coming into Florida. Listen guys, you know, it's getting very, very frustrating. Um, it's getting tragic. It's getting an awful lot of things. So, I do have a problem when we see people like our fabulous friend, Paul Begley never mentioning it. Now I haven't watched his videos. I just clicked on it because it was a link and I didn't know it was a Paul Begley video. I listened to this in here, this video. He doesn't mention anything about weather modification, geoengineering, nothing. People are dying. People are getting sick. And well, if you're not going to be dealing with reality, and you're not going to be talking the truth, then you have put your side on, put yourself on the side of evil. And I don't get it. When the consequences are so severe, when you know people who have suffered the consequences, when you know how long the consequences are, when you know that so many people can't bounce back. And you're just up there reporting what's going on and you're claiming that it's all about, that, well, it's all been prophesized. There's nothing that we can do, I guess. Nothing.
right? Nothing we can do. Well, I don't accept that. And I don't think anybody should accept that. And yeah, there are an awful lot of people who I guess look at these people as if they're authority, as if as if they're the authority on the Bible, on God, on 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 prophecy, on Paul Begley, really? Are you serious? 